A lot of people often refer to North Queensland as being a tropical paradise, and it's easy to see why. I mean, look at this. You've got palm trees, white sandy beaches, blue ocean, tropical islands, all that sort of stuff. And it definitely meets the criteria for tropical paradise. And with all of that stuff I mentioned, such as the beautiful forests and all that, comes a myriad of unique and interesting wildlife. A lot of which will absolutely end you. Now, everybody's aware of things like saltwater crocodiles, the box jellyfish, and the myriad of snakes and all that sort of stuff that abound in Australia. But, um, those aren't the animals I'm particularly scared of. Um, it's pretty easy to avoid saltwater crocodiles and box jellyfish, you know, just don't go in the water. And as for snakes, well, the last time I saw a snake was actually earlier this afternoon, and it was slithering across the road in front of me, and I drove over it, because I wasn't swerving to avoid a snake. As such, if anyone sees a snake on the road about 10 kilometers south of Ingham, it's dead. Don't worry, it got in a fight with a Camry and lost. But there are animals around here that I am legit terrified of. We'll start with the cassowary. What is a cassowary, I hear you ask? Well, basically, it's like a flamboyant emu, but it has knives on its feet. Cassowaries are found in the wet tropics of Queensland and in Papua New Guinea. So thankfully they don't actually live around Townsville. Their range starts maybe about 100 kilometers north of Townsville or thereabouts. But those are places I'm going to be quite a bit, so it is something I will have to contend with. Now, cassowaries don't actually attack humans that often. The only time it does happen is if you encounter one which has chicks with it and they're fiercely protective of their chicks. And although the attacks are rare, when they do occur, let's just say that the word disembowel is used quite a lot when describing the attacks. <sighs> Yeah, mate. Yeah, oh All right, we're coming. <laughs> Cassowaries are big, too. I mean, really big. The biggest ones can be over six feet tall and weigh about 75 kilograms. To put that into perspective, that's how big I am, or at least was until I quit smoking and put 10 kilos on. Just have to figure out how to quit this bloody thing now. Next up, we have the Irukandji. What, I hear you ask, is an Irukandji? Well, an Irukandji is a type of jellyfish. Now, everyone knows about the box jellyfish up here. They are the reason that you simply cannot go in the water in Northern Australia in the summer months. This time of year, they're not around. But the Irukandji, on the other hand, this little fella's always around. Now, they tend not to come near the shore like the box jellyfish, but let's just say you decide to go out the Great Barrier Reef and do a bit of scuba diving and snorkeling. Well, the Irukandji is the reason you actually have to wear those stinger suits out there. Very flattering looking things. I've worn one before, but thankfully there's no photographic evidence of that remaining, I think. Anyway, if an Irukandji gets you, the symptoms of the sting are the usual horrible pain and all that sort of stuff that you'd expect from a jellyfish sting. They can actually be fatal, but something you frequently see listed as a symptom of an Irukandji sting is a sense of impending doom or extreme fear. So not only does it hurt like all hell, you're going to be scared out of your wits while you're hurting. And uh, the worst thing about the Irukandji is that you're not gonna see it coming. 
Although its tentacles are about a meter long, the Irukandji itself is about the size of a thumbnail. The tentacles are really, really skinny. You're not going to see them. So if you're swimming out in the Great Barrier Reef and you've just gone in in your shorts or your bikini or whatever, yeah, don't. Don't do that. Meet the Irukandji jellyfish. It's a small, square-shaped jellyfish, about the size of a sugar cube, with four long, extendable tentacles. It's found right throughout the tropical waters of the world, wherever you find coral reef. So why are we out here at night? Well, basically we're trying to catch these little guys, and they're attracted to the light. During the daylight hours, they're very difficult to see, but at night, with lights in the water, they swim towards the light, and you can just hook them out of the water with a pool scoop. Just, just don't. Incidentally, because of our old friend global warming, the Irukandji jellyfish has been found in waters that they normally aren't expected to be found, such as the English Channel. Enjoy that, English people. Now, I hear you ask, what could possibly be worse than a six foot tall murder bird or an invisible jellyfish that can actually cause you to crap your pants? Metaphorically speaking, that is. Although, possibly literally speaking, too. Well, you might not believe this, but it's the magpie. Now, if you're watching this in the Northern Hemisphere, you're going to think, I've lost my mind. It's like, magpies, like, they're harmless. Yeah, they have a tendency of stealing shiny objects and what have you, but they're no danger to humans. Well, the Australian magpie is a slightly different prospect. Now, if you encounter a magpie out in the country, they're completely harmless. However, the magpies that live in Australian cities have actually learned to swoop humans that go near their nests. Now, this only happens during their nesting season, which is in the springtime here, so about September to December or thereabouts. If you go close to one, it is quite common that some magpies will just fly down out of a tree and go straight for your face. People have been injured, both by the magpies clawing at them and pecking them, or a frequent source of magpie-related in injury is, um, people falling off of bicycles. Magpies will frequently swoop bicycles and if you see one of those things coming right for your face, you're probably gonna crap your pants and fall off the bike. <sighs> oh my God! <sighs> oh, keep going! It's coming back! <laughs> A common defense against magpie attacks is actually tying loads of cable ties to your bicycle helmet. Makes it look like it's all spiky and stuff and the magpies apparently are less prone to attack. If the magpie is used to being fed by humans, apparently they don't attack. So they're kind of dicks, basically. It's a case of feed me or I'm gonna peck your eyeballs out. Nice. I don't actually ride a push bike very often, but I do ride a motorcycle, as anyone who has seen my channel before will know. And you might think, well, you're going to be safe on a motorcycle, aren't you? Well, no. No, no, you aren't. That video alone is the main reason I always wear a full face helmet. See you later kids, and uh, stay safe. <laughs>